We've talked a lot about Samsung phones lately, but it's April, which means we're in new TV season. So today I wanna to cover two of Samsung's most exciting TVs for 2022. Samsung is the number one TV maker in the world by market share. And the reason for that success is that Samsung sticks closely to its smartphone strategy. They are TVs at every price point, whether you want a giant 8K TV, there's still no reason to buy one of those, or a budget 4K set that's far more sensible in price. Last year, Samsung hopped on the big trend of mini LED TVs, which offer better brightness and contrast than past models by shrinking down the local dimming zone LEDs and cramming way more of them inside. There are new versions of those TVs coming out this year too, but I'm way more excited about two firsts. The one we've got to talk about right off the bat is the new Samsung OLED. Yes, Joining the rest of Samsung's 2022 TV lineup is a new OLED TV that comes in 65 and 55 inch sizes. Now, Samsung dabbled in OLED TVs like a decade ago, but ever since then, the dominant player has been LG, and in particular, LG Display. That's the company that produces the OLED panels for LG Electronics, Sony, Vizio, and many other brands. You might be thinking, but wait, Samsung is a major supplier of OLED screens for phones and tablets and laptops, so why would it cede the OLED TV market to LG? Well, there are a couple reasons, and one I'll cover later. The main issue is that these two companies are fierce competitors, and Samsung wasn't about to stick an LG OLED inside one of its own TVs. It's also trying to look beyond OLED with futuristic concepts like the wall and micro LED. Okay, so what's changed now? Well, Samsung Display, the sister company of Samsung Electronics, has come up with its own TV-sized OLED panel, and it's more advanced than the LG panels that already offer phenomenal picture quality and get such rave reviews year after year. Samsung is using what's called QD OLED, and that QD stands for Quantum Dot. And that gives away how this tech is different from LG's W OLED, also known as WRGB OLED. The differences here can get pretty technical, but as a short overview, all OLED screens are self-emissive, meaning each pixel can make its own light without the backlight systems that LCD TVs need. They can also shut off individually, which is how you get those perfect blacks that OLED is known for. At the base level, LG Display's OLED panels mix blue and yellow to make white subpixels that then go through a color filter to create red, green, and blue. But that color filter absorbs some of the brightness, so LG adds a white subpixel to help make up for that. Even so, one weakness of OLED has always been that it can't reach the same peak brightness or HDR highlights as the very best LCD TVs. A lot of people don't care, but if your TV is going in a very sunny room, you might. QD OLED doesn't really offer any brightness breakthroughs. So how is it different? Well, Samsung Display starts with blue pixels and runs those through a printed sheet of quantum dots to create red and green, with those original pure blue subpixels also passing through. It's way more efficient than the color filter method, and so there's no need for a white subpixel to help bring brightness back up. That might sound like a subtle change in approach, but it makes all the difference. It's because one of the big advantages of QD OLED is improved color brightness and saturation. So colors still look vivid even during very bright scenes, and reds, greens, and blues come off the screen as deeper and just more pure. But I'm not talking about some massive difference here. This is the kind of thing that's really only noticeable in side-by-side -side comparisons. And Sony, which is also using these new QD OLED panels on one of its high-end 2022 TVs, let me do just that. Granted, this was a very controlled demo, but the QD OLED TV did hit saturation levels of red and green that Sony's older TV with an LG Display OLED couldn't quite match. Sony tells me that while it's not seeing substantial brightness upgrades in terms of nits, our eyes perceive the QD OLED screen as brighter because of the superior color brightness. Off-angle viewing, which is already fantastic on OLED TVs, is another thing that's ever so slightly better on QD OLED. So by all these early accounts, QD OLED could further refine what are already the best TVs you can get. But the strange part about all of this is that Samsung Electronics isn't really hyping the OLED much. It's not putting any special attention on the QD OLED panel and its marketing. It's just calling this the Samsung OLED TV. Technically, it's not even the flagship TV for 2022. Now, I think this low-key introduction is partly because Samsung spent years ragging on OLED as not the right fit for TVs. It made a whole website about the risks of burn-in and proudly said that its TVs were unaffected by it. So it's a little awkward for Samsung to now do an about face and bring an OLED TV to market. Samsung Display claims that QD OLED screens should have even better resistance to burn-in than other panels. It's technically still possible, but unlikely on most OLED TVs nowadays. As for the price, I'm actually surprised. 
The 65 inch model costs $3,000, while the 55 inch size runs $2,200. That's expensive, yes, but comparable to what LG charges for its own flagship G2 OLED this year. So despite having a first generation panel inside, Samsung isn't demanding some huge premium. Sony's TV with the QD OLED screen is definitely gonna cost more, but I expect that TV to have better image processing and it supports Dolby Vision, which Samsung continues to ignore because it's hell bent on making HDR10 Plus happen. Long story short, if your goal is to find a TV that has the best possible picture quality, OLED is still the answer. And I don't just mean this year's stuff. There's nothing wrong with older models if you can find a good deal on them. But not everybody cares about having the best tech specs or the fanciest TV. Turns out there are a lot of people who hate having a traditional TV, this ugly black rectangle, messing with the vibe and decor of their living room. And that brings us to the second part of this video, because those are the people who've turned Samsung's The Frame TV into such a big hit. I've got family members and coworkers who have all bought The Frame in the last year because of how well it disguises itself as a piece of art when it's not being used. But some of those folks might soon wish they'd waited a bit longer to buy one. See, because for 2022, Samsung's switching to a matte display that cuts way back on glare and makes the artwork shown on The Frame almost look like canvas. I recently got a chance to check out the matte frame and compare it directly head to head against last year's model. Frankly, the difference is amazing. It's to the point where I questioned whether I was looking at an actual TV and had to go up close to hunt for pixels. This new frame still has the same customizable bezels and now comes in more sizes, but that matte screen is the star of the show. Samsung's art store has thousands of pieces to pick between, and that artwork now looks more real and convincing than ever before. They're gonna sell a ton of these things. That said, I am curious about whether a more matte finish will affect the TV's clarity and sharpness. But maybe the target market for the frame just doesn't mind much. This is not the most impressive TV on paper. There's no local dimming, which is a bummer, but it does support 4K gaming at 120 Hz, so it could be worse. The frame is fundamentally a good enough TV that looks way classier than its competition. My LG OLED has an art mode on it, but no one's mistaking it for a framed print. Samsung's 2022 version of the frame runs between $1,000 for a 43-inch model and $3,000 for a giant 75-inch display, but I don't know who wants an art frame that big. The sizes in between seem like the sweet spot to me, and those cost under $2,000. Both the OLED and new matte frame are up for pre-order now and start shipping soon. I can't wait to review both of them, but for very different reasons. One's a showcase of the latest TV tech, the other of style and trying to shake up the very concept of what a TV can be. Hey everybody, thanks so much for watching. I recently reviewed Samsung's new $900 portable projector, the Freestyle. You can read all about the good and the bad on theverge.com.